So we are now recording this session. Good morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, April the 6th, and my name is Matthew Burgess. I'm from the University of Virginia, and I'll be facilitating this call along with Neil Caden and Adam Marshall from Oxford University and Louisa Lee from Marist College and a whole host of other wonderful people. So welcome, everybody. I guess we're going to get started by asking for some project updates and announcements from any project team reps that happen to be on the call. Neil may have some announcements and some other people may have some announcements. So we'll take just a minute and project team reps, if you are here and you have things that you want to contribute either on the mic or in the chat, please feel free. Well, I guess I'll I guess I'll kick it off. I'm sorry I'm on speaker. I somehow lost my Bluetooth headset connection here. I hope it's coming across okay. Um you hear me all right? Yeah, Neil, you sound great. Okay. Um so let's see. I mean Sakai eleven, uh there's great progress uh happening on Sakai eleven. Um there's like an hour and a half QA planning meeting every week. There's a two hour QA test fest that happens on ten AM Thursdays. Every week, there's uh, my understand their local institutions are having some of them are having their own test fests on top of that. Uh, we've gone through a tremendous effort of triaging um, JIRA issues. So what happens is issues are getting reported really well, and then we need to make sure that we're capturing um, which you know ones are going to be uh, we need to get resolved before we release the Chi 11. Those are called blocker priority issues. So um, we're making I think really good progress, you know, going through all those issues. Um, uh, and I know Morpheus, uh, some fixes are going to be starting to ramp, are starting to ramp up. Um, we could still probably, if there's developers out there, this is probably not the best call for it, but if we had additional development um, uh, um, attention on Morpheus, I think that would be probably quite helpful. Um, and I can help to, you know, sort of hook you up with who to talk to. There was the uh, um, hackathon, which was very successful. I think it bumped up some of the effort on Morpheus um, fixes, which is really good. Uh, so we needed more of that. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I'm hoping, I kind of my gut feeling is we can get an RCO one out uh, by May, maybe earlier, uh, but I think it's challenging in terms of, uh, the challenge is that it's, it's hard to know exactly, um, like with Morpheus as an example, uh, how we, we determine what's kind of a blocker for Morpheus. We were discussing this on the QA team call yesterday that, uh, you know, maybe there's lots of little things that, are, that w individually wouldn't be considered blocker priority items for Morpheus fixes, but maybe as a whole, when you look at it holistically, you wouldn't want to release with something with so many issues. So I think we have some challenges in just terms of figuring out how much more we need to test overall in Sakai 11 um, and how much and what the scope is to make sure that we can kind of nail that down for, for Morpheus fixes. And uh, so my gut feeling is like we're doing a great job. It's just hard to, to pin it down on a very specific date as far as I can tell. I don't know if anyone else in the community working on these things has some other insights into it. Um, that's kind of the overall Sakai 11. You know, like I said, really excited with the progress that's uh, being made and uh, hoping we can get a, a RCO one out in the next, uh, you know, by by May. Awesome, thanks, Neil. Any other project reps on the call that might want to give any updates before we move on? Hi, this is Louisa Lee. Um, I have a uh, uh, progress update on the Atlas, uh, which is a Perio Teaching and Learning Awards, uh, Innovation Awards. Uh, we are in the progress of reviewing all the applications, and hopefully I think we will have the winners uh, on Tuesday next week. Um, so we are hoping to have uh, about three um, winners this time, and the they will hopefully go to the Apera Conference in New York this year. Um, that's a very quick update. That's great, Louisa, thanks. I'm looking forward to those presentations. I know the presentations that I got to see last year at Open Aperio were excellent, so that's really exciting and good to hear. Any other team reps that want to give any updates before we hand things off 
to Adam. Adam is asking if there is an Etherpad page, and yes, there is. I will paste the link in the chat once again here. And there it is. So for those of you who might have signed in a little bit later, the Etherpad link is now back in the chat. And if there are no other updates from team reps, I'm going to go ahead and hand things off to Adam Marshall from Oxford University, who's going to talk to us about the Contact Us tool. So let me give Adam presenter privileges here. But I gave him to Adam Howarwas, which was wrong. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I've never done this before. So I've got the thing I want to show open in Firefox. Is it? Is that just going to work? If I switch tabs, will it just appear once I'm sharing my screen? I think that's right. Neil, okay. can you confirm that for us? Uh, say that again. I'm sorry. I was, well, I was just wondering, uh, so when I'm a presenter, do I just um, switch my browser tab to Firefox, uh, in Firefox to what I want to show, and it will just work? Is that how it, how it goes? No, no. You have oh. to... Uh, you have, there should be on the upper left-hand corner, there should be a screen share, an icon that represents screen sharing. Okay, and yeah. To, and you have to click that. that. And you'll have to go through a number of, you know, dialogue boxes. Right? Okay. Because it will say, do you allow this and do you allow that? And if you get one that says, do you want to upgrade Java, click on skip. Skip that one um, because otherwise it will take a long time to upgrade your Java and you probably don't need to do that. Um, uh, okay, uh, allow I've got, yeah, okay. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's lots of uh, warnings about how yeah, busy jobs. Right, website. lots of warnings come up, exactly. And then, and you should definitely allow most of the things, but skip the one for, if there's one for Java update, and then there should be a, yeah. fi when you get to the final one, it will say run. It'll be like Java applet, and you can click a run button, and that'll be like, okay, now you're in the home stretch there. Whoa, here we go. I'm in the home stretch. Okay, so right. I'm going to see. Right, okay. Well, please, yeah. uh, people, do stop me as I go along. And maybe uh, people might need to point out uh, that if there's something in the chat, because uh, I'm going to be looking at a totally different tab. <laughs> and I won't be seeing the chat. <laughs> so, so this should be, you should now see um, our local instance of Sakai, which we call WebLearn. Uh, do shout out if you can't see it. I assume you can see it. So what I was talking about then is the contact us tool. And as I hope you hopefully you will see, here it is on the front page. So what I was going to do is I was going to do a sort of a bit of an extended version of that video that I posted the other day. I'm sure one or two people watched it. Most people probably didn't. But uh, that had to be squeezed into five minutes because I was using Jing and that um, you only get um, Jing for free um, if you can do videos under five minutes. So anyway. So we've developed this, this Contact Us tool, which we have got appearing on every single page in, uh, in Web Learning Sakai. Um, and it's always just above the help. So uh, I'll just show you an example, going to another site, seek just above the help. Um, and the reason we did this is because we were absolutely uh, fed up with people um, contacting us about something that was wrong in the site. Like they said, oh, you've made a spelling mistake you know, on this page, or oh, this question I don't understand. And we think about, it's nothing to do with us, you know, we're the central team. What you, the person you need to be contacting is the course leader, the course tutor, or whoever it is who's, um, who's doing the course. So we uh, developed this contact us tool, which is supposed to act as a kind of routing page um, to, so that the right person gets the right message, gets the right question. So anyway, that was the purpose. So I'll go into it, that in a little more detail, but I just wanted to point out, first of all, how this thing works when you're not logged in. Now, I think we're quite uh, unique at Oxford in that we've got lots and lots of public pages in Sakai. Um, so what you're looking at now is, um, these, well, I'm not logged in, basically. So you're looking at a public page. And as you can see, we've, we've also got a hierarchy, which is one of our things. But um, I can go into, for example, the colleges page. And um, that's all public. I can go into the conference of colleges and that's all public. I'm still not logged in and you will see that the contact us tool is on every page. So it's a bit like, you know, when you go to Google or whatever, on every page you see there's a contact us link. Um, so we, one of the requirements of this was that this contact us tool must work 
when you're not logged in. So I'm just going back to the front page of WordPress anyway, but for no good reason, to be honest. <laughs> but I am. So someone's got a question, you know, they come to WebLearn, they've got a question. Uh, they click on the Contact Us tool, and we've got these four um, customizable panels um, that you can disable um, one or more of these panels, although obviously it makes absolutely no sense at all if there's no panels. <laughs> so generally, you need at least one. And the text in these panels, I say it's customizable, it's, you, you have to edit a properties file, uh, basically. So it's so, sort of customizable, but it's customizable and then you have to compile and build Sakai. Um, and likewise, the, the links at the bottom of the page, where they go, it is customizable as well. So as is the text uh, above. So we've got a, we've got a link to, the, to our help pages. Um, we have our own sort of separate help site. Um, and then the four boxes are the the sort of the uh, thrust of the boxes is fixed. So the first box deals with problems you have with content, and we've tried these these bullet points here. We've tried to come up with uh, you know a, a, an exhaustive list, but not too many bullet points that tries to get to the nub of the problem. So we're trying to find out um, is the the person trying to visit the site uh, if they're seeing a site unavailable message, then they need to contact the owner of the site and. Uh, state a case for why they should be a member of the site. Now, you know, it might be that they're somehow missing from the list of people on the course, or it may be that they're an external person who's supposed to be looking at the course. There's lots of different reasons why somehow you might not be um, uh, on the site. Um, if a person clicks on a link on the site, well, you know, um, and the, the link is broken, well, it's nothing to do with the central team generally. Um, if it's a link in a web page or a Word document or something, then the person who wrote that needs to know and so on. So all these um, issues here are supposed to be um, to do with the problem with some sort of user-authored content on the site. Uh, the second box is for sort of contacting the help desk. A number of people obviously forget their passwords from time to time and all that sort of thing. Or if they've looked in the help pages and they can't find the answer, then they can contact um, the central WebLearn team. Um, the, the second, uh, sorry, the third box actually goes to the same place as the second box in our case. So that's when there's some sort of bug. I mean, obviously, hardly ever see bugs in Sakai, but um, if there was a bug, people could report it here. And then we like to, the fourth box, we like to prove we're quite a responsive kind of team. And um, we, we do like people suggesting features. Uh, sometimes we can fix them. Sometimes they're a bit complicated. Sometimes we can actually get a project together, get some money and, and you know, do a new feature or something. So we've got these four um, boxes, and they are the same regardless of whether you're logged in or not. Um, so what happens when you're not logged in um, is, uh, if you click on page, uh, you get uh, this page here, and the, the big difference really between being logged in and being not logged in is, well, there's a capture down here, but also there's a, um, what is it? oh yes, you put in your email address, because obviously we don't know who, um, is uh, reporting upon. If you're logged in, we do know who you are. Otherwise, we don't just so put your email address in there. So you can basically type a message in here, type a summary, uh, put your email address in. You can uh, add an attachment, press the capture, and then you post this uh, message off, and it will um, uh, get posted to whatever the um, uh, whatever the target of that uh, of this, this email uh, is set. So. Um, uh, no, sorry, that's not true. <laughs> where, where it goes to, uh, sorry, this page goes to the uh, person uh, listed as the site contact. So when you're in you know, in site info and you see um, the site owner's name and the site contact email, that's where this message gets posted off. Uh, sorry, got that wrong. Um, and the second and third boxes are the same in the sense that um, they go to the same people and it's the same principle again. Um, this time, the email is fixed to be the central help desk. Um, again, you have to put in your email address, put a capture in and so on. So but both these two things go to the central help desk. And the fourth one, I can click on this, we've got a kind of bulletin board here, which allows you to suggest an enhancement to WebLearn. So, but it could be an email. Um, it doesn't have to, this one doesn't have to go to a website. It could go to uh, an email account. It could go to the same email addresses as Previous two boxes, or, or you know, or whatever, really. So, so we've got those uh, four boxes there. So, uh, shall I uh, just? I'll just chat this if there's any comments. Um, yeah, oh, <laughs> people want to come to Oxford. 
So I don't see any questions in the uh, the chat. Um, I'll, I'll flip back to Webworm again and we'll, we'll carry on. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in uh, and we'll see that things change a bit. Not not massive amount, to be honest, um, but they change a bit. So I'm now logged in. Um, so if we were to report a problem to the owner of the site, uh, we get a slightly different screen. So we're not being asked for the email address anymore because the system knows um, who I am. Therefore, it knows the email address. Uh, I'm not really going into the issue of if someone managed to get log into SACA who doesn't have an email address set. I guess no message was sent. But uh, the, the other difference here is that you get um, the option of who to contact. Now, not, not a particularly good example. Let me go to, um, let's go to this site, random site, completely random site. Um, nice looking Swiss roll there, make you all hungry in advance of lunch. Um, so if you're reporting a problem to the site owner, um, you, by default, the name listed, or the name where this message is going to be posted, is the site contact, but underneath it is listed all the other um, uh, well, people who have got site update permission. Um, so in this case, it's just me, actually. Um, there could be others in that list. And if you don't want to be in that list, um, as a as a maintainer or as, you know as an, um, um, a tutor or whatever, you can hide yourself uh, in the usual way by going to the preferences tool in my workspace and saying I'll be hidden in the site. In which case your name wouldn't show up there. So let's just go to let's find another site. Um, see if I can find a site with more with a different number of um, site contacts on it. Just to prove I didn't rig this. Uh, okay, so in this case then, we these uh, these five people are all um, listed. Um, as in our case maintainers, so they've all got site update permission. So if you happen to know, uh, you know, if you're a student and you happen to know that, you know, Stuart Lee has made a mistake on his, um, some, some of the um, Word documents he's uploaded or on his, some of his web pages, and you can actually direct a message straight to him. Otherwise, get sent to the site contact and, uh, and me as the site contact could forward it to the, um, the specific uh, lecturer. Um, yeah, so, so that's how the, this thing works. Um, yep, no much. I will, I'll try and show you what the message is that is received um, in a minute. Um, I didn't prepare that, just realised I can soon find a copy. Um, so just, just to demonstrate, going to the um, report uh, problem to the web loan site uh, team, uh, it's just the same. This time, um, we're not, it's not dealing with site content, therefore um, it, you don't have the drop-down list of people who have update rights to the site. This time it just basically goes to the email address you put in. So in the uh, three cases here, the, it, all, all these messages go to um, the email address or the web page that is um, set in the properties file. I mean, if you have like a web form where you report problems, you can have um, a website URL here, you click on it, and it would be like clicking on here, it would take you to a page uh, where you put in the details. Um, in our case, we um, we do all the um, sort of answering queries and things over email, so we don't do that. Um, the, let me see. So I don't know whether this is quite going to work, but let's say I've been uh, given um, a site that I'm not a member of um, as a link. So you know, you're on a particular course, and the tutor says, "Oh, visit this site," and you try and go there and you get a slight unavailable message. So you think, oh, that's not right. So um, we've customized slightly this text on this site unavailable page. Now this, this page here is just, uh, basically it's a page stored in Sakai called um, Shriek Error, a bit like the Gateway site, it's just a site um, uh, stored in the system and you can edit, you can change the text that's shown when you visit the site. So this, this site basically is a site which says site unavailable and this text on the screen is what we've typed in. So there's a few instructions about what you might like to do if you can't get into the site. And basically, I'm sure people don't read it, <laughs> but anyway, basically, if you can't, if none of these things work up here, then you can click on the contact us tool and it, you will be able to report the problem. And the cunning thing here is um, the message will be sent to the site owner, um, even though you don't actually know who the site owner is. So um, even though you can't get into the site, the message can be sent to the site owner. If, uh, I think I'm right in saying, if the site is listed in the public index of sites, because if you want to hide a site, um, 
uh, so you can say when you set up a site, you can say whether you want it listed um, in the public um, list of sites here. Um, if it's not in there, then you won't be able to see the contact. But if it is in the list in the um, list of public sites, you will be able to see the contact. Therefore, you could find out who the contact was anyway. Therefore, we're not giving any information away by having, having the contact on this page. So anyway, you can set types and text in. You know, I think I should be into the site because my professor X told me there was useful information in and says I should visit. And then that message will get sent to the site owner and then they can make a decision as to whether they want to um, add you to the site. So that's the cunning thing is it will, it, you know, it's, even though you've, um, you're on the other site, actually the URL, um, the details here are taken from the site you were trying to go to in the first place. So it's all very clever. And just in case people don't know about the uh, public index of sites, uh, we've, it's just a, it's a sort of a, a little tool um, which you can uh, place on any site if you want to. Um, it's not the sort of, it's not the tool that, that, that you find in um, site info um, in the tools list by default, it could be added. Um, so you might have to do it through the sites tool, but it just basically allows you to search for sites. And if you search for a site, it, if a site's in the public index, you can find it um, and it will tell you who the contact is, which is why I say if it's in, um, the public index of sites. We're not giving any information away by list by telling you who the messages are being sent to. I oh, understood that. Let me just check. See if there's any, any um, questions. Uh, user voice. Yes. Yes. Was user voice. Yeah. Uh, turn it in. Use user voice, uh, which is why we um, uh, we used it. So there's nothing uh, nothing of any any importance there. So um, uh, well, that's that's kind of. What, about the tool. So there's two more things I wanted to tell you. One, the first one is I wanted to show you the, um, what, the, what the message looks like that gets posted to you, what the email message looks like. Uh, and I'm going to have to do that by going to my blog, and I really should have prepared this earlier, so I'm most awfully sorry. Uh, but um, it's good, good publicity for my blog, isn't it? Um, so let me see. So, um, yeah, I think I might better find it here. As the blog he hasn't actually found the contact us post. Hopefully, I can find it here. Um, oh dear. Okay. <laughs> I didn't find it. Um, let's try and search for feedback. Um, if I can't find the, um, the blog post with the screenshot of the email message in it, um, I, can, I can tell you what's in it. All right, one more uh, go. Uh, um, no idea where it's gone. Anyway, okay, I'll tell you what, what message is, what, what you get in the email. So when you, when you use the, con the, um, the contact us tool, when you send a message, obviously you, the subject of the email is what's in the subject field. Um, and the summary is a kind of description of the user problem. But what we also do is we uh, use, um, uh, you, you, the, when you're uh, a web server, you can find out an awful lot of information about um, a particular uh, situation that a user's in. So first of all, well, um, so I can find out <clears throat> what the site is. So it will always include the URL of the site where the message was sent from. So many times people email us saying, oh, you know, forms tool doesn't work or something. And you think, well, you know, which site and where and everything. So you always get the URL of the site. You always get um, the person's name, email address, and username, assuming they're logged in. Um, and you get all the information that sort of Sakai knows about the particular context in the site. But you also get all the information that the browser sends along as well. So a web server can find out, uh, for example, what plugins um, somebody's browser is using. They can find out the, um, the the version of the browser, the name of the browser, you know, whether it's Firefox and whether it's version what their version is. So all this information is put into the email message, which helps you troubleshoot. Because if someone's complaining, you know, this web page looks awful, and it turns out they're using Internet Explorer 6, uh, well, you know, it's kind of like, well, well what do you expect, really? Um, so uh, rather than, um, uh, you know, basically the, the, the person on the end of the email is given all the information um, that we can possibly know about a particular situation. So it might actually mean that you don't have to contact the user again and say, oh, can you please tell me which browser it is you're using? You know, so, so all that information is in there. And if, uh, if anyone uh, is bothered, it's, it, there's, a, there's a post in my blog where I've got a, a screenshot of the email message. Uh, I, maybe I'll try and find it later and post the URL. Um, so that, that's kind of 
how the tool works. The, the other thing I wanted to talk about before we go to the discussion or whatever was the way that we have set it up here. Now, um, I mentioned before that this contact us tool is on every single site in WebLearn, and I, I've you know, demonstrated randomly. Let's go into medical sciences. Look, um, again, here it is. Look, so I'm, I'm not fitting. Um, and we, uh, so basically, we sort of treat it a bit like um, the help tool. So the help tool is on every single site in, um, in Sakai, and it's not the sort of tool we find in site info. It just gets added behind the scenes. So when you create a site in um, Sakai, you get the help tool. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't remove it. Um, it just gets done. And that's how we've used Contact Us, because um, you can use it as a tool. So it can be in the list of you know tools in, in site info, manage tools. There can be a box where you tick Contact Us. But then that means that people don't have to add this um, at, uh, tool to their site, uh, which may well mean that there's no way of actually the, the user, the student who's using the site, contacting anybody about the site. Now, in the past, before we had this tool, um, we used to have a link at the bottom of the page which said contact us, and that was on every single page, and that came straight to us. Uh, even in the message, we did used to say, if this is a problem with the content of the site, please contact the site owner. But of course, nobody read it, so we always got the messages. So now we got rid of that message at the bottom, and we've put this on every single um, site um, in in WebLearn. And there's a sort of uh, yeah, you know, there's a script you can run which we can supply which does that. So I mean, the reason I wanted to talk about this tool really here was to find out what people thought. Because at the moment, in Nightly, and I presume on the QA servers. The contact us tool, feedback tool, is just a regular tool. So you can add it to your site or you don't have to add it. It's entirely up to you. Um, but what I was thinking is I think personally it would be far better if it was treated like a help tool. And then, you know, when you've got Sakai 11 out of the box uh, and you run the conversion scripts, um, assuming you hadn't opted to disable the feature, uh, I'd like the contact us tool to be added to every single site in the system. And then people could get, a, get away removing their contact us link wherever they put it. And also, they'd have the added benefit of, hopefully, the central help desk not getting messages that they wasn't that they weren't supposed to get. So, so uh, yeah, I, I would be, you know, I would keen, be keen to have this um, contact us tool deployed in the way that we intended it to be deployed. In other words, on every single site uh, at the bottom of the tools list. But I just wondered really what um, this, this bunch of people here um, thought about that, whether you think uh, it just really would go down well at your institution or whether you think it's a good idea or whatever. So I'm gonna, gonna switch back to um, Big Boom Button and um, quite happy to take questions or it'd be quite nice to talk about that last point. And um, yeah, see what you think really, any, any suggestions, and so on and so forth. Yeah, thanks, Adam, for that presentation. This is obviously not a tool that I'm familiar with, but you know, Jennifer made a comment in the chat that this is a nice way to filter issues rather than everything going to the help desk or to people who do front end Sakai support for each yeah. instance what we do. And so I love that feature because I constantly struggle with the issue that you just mentioned of yes. people asking us <laughs> questions that we don't have and that we yeah. don't deal with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, is there a consensus out there of do people, you know, do people think it should be on every site or do people think that would just not work at your institution? It'd be interesting just to have a quick, can you vote in this system? Uh, <laughs> if you could vote, it'd be quite good to have a vote or people could just maybe comment on it. Yeah, there is a vote. There is a voting mechanism somewhere. Mm. <laughs> no. Oh, there's a hand thing there, isn't there? Uh, so, well, why do we? So, if you look underneath the list of um, participants, there should be like a hand waving at you, just above the link that says webcams. What about if I ask the question, "Do you think at your institution you would like it on every site?" So, you click on the hand thing. I've just done it. Um, let's just see. Uh, so, there's one person, which is me, thinks it should be on every site. Is uh, anybody else? Oh, Matt does as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, so we've got, I don't know, twenty-six people. Two out of twenty-six think it should be on every site. So, so, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the panel's not available to everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. There is. I mean, there is a. a yeah. There is a point that this is another item on the menu. Um, 
I don't think we, sorry, uh, Sal was um, suggesting combining contact us and hell, which is quite a good idea, actually. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I, I don't think we would do that work. Uh, we're a bit busy going, moving to Sakai 11. Um, I mean, it could, uh, well, in, in some senses, um, the, yeah, I mean, the, the, the contact us tool has a link to the help. Um, so you could basically change the name of the contact us tool, call it help, and then um, have the link to the pop-up help in the contact us tool. So actually, I think doing what you ask for there, Sal, well, would actually be very, very easy for you. Um, you know, so you could get rid of the help tool, you could rename the contact us as help, and then on the contact us page, you can have um, uh, you know, some text which says, you know, if you're looking for help about the tool, then um, click here. But of course, there's the little question mark icon, isn't there, in the um, top right of every site, which takes you to the help help screen at the right page in the screen. And I don't know quite how that would work with contact us. Um, there's a couple of people saying it should be on every site. Um, there's actually nobody saying it shouldn't be on every site, which I take as being encouraging. Um, so, I mean, does anybody want to speak up who doesn't think it should be on every site? Would you think it would just not work at your institution or that the help desk would go crazy? Um, <laughs> or, you know, uh, I, I have heard some people say that they don't want anyone suggesting new features or even getting a, a sniff that you, you know, it's acceptable to propose new features. But of course, you can remove that last box. You can remove any of the boxes. Um, so if you don't like the idea of, of people, you know, getting um, expectations above what can be provided, you can remove that box and people would never know that they were able to suggest features. Um, <coughs> yeah. So, I mean, given the total lack of anyone saying it shouldn't be on every site, um, I wonder whether we should try and pursue getting it on every site, but having a, a property somewhere which basically you set by default, it's enabled, but you can set to be disabled, so it doesn't go on every site. Does that sound like a reasonable proposal? Personally, I think that definitely sounds like something that we might want to pursue. Can you have that? Well, the, the, Neil, you had thoughts about Adam's proposal there. Yeah, I mean, um, it, 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 as, as it stands, it is in Sakai 11, so we're not trying to add new features to Sakai 11, it's just kind of how the tool is surfaced. So I would have thought it, it's not too controversial, um, just basically, basically making it so it appears on every page, but you can disable that facility if, you know, your local administrator doesn't want it to happen. So we would basically, we would, oh, sorry, carry on, Neil. That's okay. I think, you know, uh, it would help to get it turned on on our QA instance to start with. Uh, yep. So I don't know if you there's instructions on how to turn it on. Uh, it's know, almost certainly an SQL script which goes through every site and adds it as a new tool to every site. Uh, so it would, I don't quite know how that works. Uh, and, and presumably, yeah, presumably it must be added to the, like, the site template as well. So that when you when you add, so it will backfill all the current sites and will um, add. So when you as a user add a new site to the system, um, it would have the tool already added. So it would be a little change in the sort of setup of Nightly, but that's okay. I mean, I think we'd be happy to do that. Um, assuming you can. So is it is it feasible to have the template be updated in um, you know out of the box, a out of the box? Yeah, that, that's what I would be saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. See that. Is, that would be like yeah. a pull request or something or something to get. Um, yes, I guess it would. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's three things, isn't there? There's, there's a pull request that for the sort of template that goes in, or the templates that, that make up Sakai 11 distribution. And then there's a changing the template on nightly and the QA servers. And then there's the SQL to backfill uh, our existing installations of Sakai with um, the contact us tool. Yeah, I mean, I'd be very, very keen to do that. If so, yeah, I think it'd be great to get it up on the QA servers. I think that would be really awesome okay. if we could do that. We'll see. <clears throat> and then I think, you know, I think that the the trend uh, to me it seems like is that as we add new features into Sakai, um, mm. the trend is to have them beyond by default. 
Um, but yeah. I think it is worth having a discussion like on the core team and making sure the PMC knows what that would look like. Uh, so nobody's surprised to make sure yeah, and as long yeah. as there's a way to turn it off easily. I think that, uh, you know, I think that should be okay. Well, I'll, I'll draft an email uh, to those people uh, proposing what I just proposed. <laughs> um, and then if everyone agrees, um, we'll, we'll look into doing the recording. It's not much of a task. I mean, we've got stuff here. Um, right, because it's already yeah. in Sakai 11, right? I mean, that's what's... The tool is in Sakai 11, 11, yeah. And it's it just at the moment, it just appears in the, you know, a managed tools menu. So people can add it to their, their favorite site, but it's you have to be proactive to do that. Therefore, you know, most people won't do it. <laughs> Whereas it, you know, it's intended to be like, I mean, every single website has a contact us link on it, or at least it should. And it's intended to, to do that, intended to make Sakai like every other website where there's a contact us link. So that, that's the intention. Well, that sounds great. Thank you, Adam, for taking a few minutes to present this to us. And My pleasure. To see it on the QA server and play with it a little bit more. Sounds great. Yeah. Am I still sharing my screen? Or? You are. Right. Okay. Oh, there you go. Right. I'll close it and I'll, I'll post a link to the email that you get sent in the blog, in the um, chat in a second once I've managed to find it. So. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks, Adam. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give Louisa presenter privileges. We are running a little behind here because we wanted to take some time to talk about Contact Us, so we'll let Louisa share as much of her presentation as we have time for, and then we can carry on maybe into the next meeting if she has part one and part two that are so good that we have to hear. So <laughs> go ahead and give this to Louisa and go ahead and take it away. Okay, uh, I do have a very quick uh, PowerPoint I can upload here. Okay, let's see how quick I can do it. Uh, it's a very short uh, PowerPoint. Uh, where's that PowerPoint saved? Okay. Um, I will try to talk through this PowerPoint very quickly and it's basically screenshots to show evolution of the lessons tool. Uh, so uh, at the very beginning, I think some of you may still remember, this is what the lessons looks like, uh, like several years ago when they just started. You can see there are a lot of uh, quick access buttons on the top, right? And then the same uh, new version of lessons, I think it got into Sakai 10. I made the screenshot in Sakai 10 4. You can see the menus are um, drastically condensed into two big drop down menus. And then you can see it's a lot cleaner. We have some new functionality. We have condition release and the student pages. Uh, that was. Uh, around the time that we had the lead project. Um, so for about a year, we worked with Express Labs and UX teams, and we came up with this design. Uh, we have a, a very interesting new concept. Uh, I call it block design. You can see that each item will um, present itself as a block in here. And also Express, Express Labs also give us a new idea about uh, combine the blocks. So we're very intrigued. And also if you look at the top, we have quick access buttons and then one drop down. Uh, so that was before the Aperio uh, conference uh, last year, 2015. So after that, the UX team did a lot of work and we did testing and we talked with Chuck uh, Hedrick back and forth many times. And also many things happened. One of them is Morpheus. So when the Morpheus came on board, the scheme and overall UI changed drastically. So this is what we got um, around the end of 2015. And you can see that the interface drastically changed and Chuck adopted this block design. So we also have the tool to uh, create different blocks and different columns. So that was a very exciting features that we have by the end of 2015 and the beginning of 2016. We also have the 
and quick access button here, and the drop down drastically um, condensed to a plus button. Now, this is what we have at the moment. This is in uh, uh, Sakai 11 uh, QA server. I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, how I'm going to use this. Uh, you can see that we don't have the quick access button anymore. We got two drop down menu, and then uh, the print view is added and uh, also index pages. We still have the block design. I think it's very powerful. I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, how it works. Um, well, based on my study, uh, you might have a very brilliant uh, page layout design so we can share here. Let's see how far we can go here. Uh, any questions before I move on to live demo? OK, no? OK, very good. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. While you're setting that up, Louisa, we do have just one quick question. In the uh -huh. Problems with the trash can mm. close to the edit button. Uh, we haven't done UX testing on that. Uh, I personally have a little problem with that. Um, actually, I personally prefer the trash button uh, to be inside the edit window. So if they want to delete something, they actually have to click on the edit button to see the delete button. That's what I prefer. Um, but we haven't done any UX testing on that. That's a great question. So can you see my screen at the moment? Yes? OK. Yep, so I'm, uh, okay, I'm going to the QA01. Uh, let me log in. Now, I created this site. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, you can. I put all of the testing uh, user icons here so you can see all the students view here. Uh, I have two instructors and two students here. Um, so just so you know, if you do not know about the login, the user name, the ID is student01 until 10. The password is Sakai, all right? So when I'm uh, looking at the site and changing things, you can refresh the pages to look at the student view. Now, I first uh, put some content on the page, and I shamelessly promote my college, uh, Mary's College, uh, because I want the content, uh, but I don't want to uh, create the content from scratch. So this is the page that you usually see. All right, so everything is linear, vertically aligned one after another. Uh, this is a very simple page. I have a header here and then a picture, some text. There are several paragraphs. Then I have another two small sections, three hyperlinks to external websites, and then a poll. So this is what it looks like on a regular website. Now, I don't have the... Uh, I don't show you the student view yet. You can log in as a student and look at it yourself. Now, on this page, you can see that we have a block design. This is a terminology I use. Um, other people may use uh, different terminologies because this block has a border. So you can see this entire border uh, enclosed the, all the content. And then we have this little icon here at the top. This is to control the properties inside this block. All right, it uses a column icon. Uh, this is just got changed like last week. Uh, this is brand new. I'm going to show you how to use that. Now, on the right side, you have the edit button, delete button, and the plus button. The edit button also got changed just last week. This is brand new. Um, so first of all, let's look at this whole design. Uh, what I usually want to do is uh, the text is right under the picture, but I want the picture to be um, right next to the text because this area is completely unused. It's a wasted area. So I want this two together. So what I usually do is that I'm going to 
uh, go here. You see here this button. If you click in the middle, you got two buttons here: add a section break and add a column break. If I click add a column break, oops, uh, let me go back. So first of all, I'm going to break them up uh, because this is a giant block. See, this is something I usually forgot. So first, I go here and add a section break. So these text area is separated from this two subsections. So this is a giant block now. And I can add some column break. So column break here. And you can see that the title picture on the left and the text will be on the right. So this area is used more efficiently, no waste the spaces. All right, now then I think about it. So I would prefer the ad about Marist. Uh, this text header go with the text um, longer paragraphs. Uh, the picture will stay on the right. Now, when that happens, all you need to do is move this item right in front of this text. I will go to reorder and I drag this. Now, notice the number three is a column break. So what I want to do is move the about Marist under the column break, uh, right, oh, right in front of the, come on, okay, right in front of this text paragraph. All right, so if you save, voila. So the picture on the left and the text on the right. So it looks uh, very nice. Okay, so when you think about it, uh, if you have a lot of text, I have not a lot, so this occupies the right column very well. If I have a lot of text and I stretch along, it doesn't look good. So what I want to do is shrink the area of the picture, right? So I don't want it to occupy half of the page, maybe just one third of the page, then two thirds of the page would be the text. So this is what I can do. I can make use of this column icon here. So click on this column icon and then click on this double width. All right. And it will be changed to two thirds of the page. Now you probably noticed that because the size of this picture is longer than the two uh, one thirds of the page, even though the uh, Sakai itself, because of the morphia, it's a responsive design, but the picture is not. So sometimes when that happens, you have to, um, uh, let me see here, 400 pixel and 200 pixel. You have to carefully um, measure how big the pig will be and what it looks like. Okay, so that's more like it. So we have a smaller picture, and then we have two thirds of the page for the text. All right, so when that's done, this area would be a lot easier. So you can see that we have the text link on the, uh, on the left, and we're gonna have the quick poll on the right side. Uh, there are several ways I can do it. So one way to do it is just add a column break right here. So you can see one block, two blocks, three block, four block. However, if you look at the page here, it doesn't look very good because the the, the, the here uh, is one third, two thirds, and here's a half and a half. They don't line up. So uh, it's a little bit awkward to look at. So there's another feature you can take advantage of. So I will merge. This is a merge button. I will merge the two columns again. What I'm gonna do is click on this column button. I'm gonna make these two columns inside one block. All right. All right. So this is what I'm gonna do. So you can see that it's a still one block, but we got two columns inside. Okay, side by side. Uh, and, but you can probably notice that we have definitely a weird situation here because this quick poll, um, it, because of the text flow inside here. So this quick poll actually got in got here. It. Yeah, so is that a question? Did I hear something? All right. Um, okay, so 
uh, Matt, would you remind me some questions if I can? I probably cannot read the text very quickly. So um, you can see that if you use this uh, text flow, uh, two columns inside one block, the text flow can sometimes screw up your uh, design because you can see the title goes over here. So that, that can be tricky to fix. Uh, so sometimes I have to um, just delete this. Okay, let's delete it and then uh, edit here. So I would say pull. All right, well, that worked. Um, so we have this. Uh, related information three links on the left and have the quick poll on the right. Now it all makes sense. Now this is the design uh, of this page. Uh, is there any quick questions here before I go into the other two pages? Um, okay. Resolution lock icon in the edit for embedded messages. Well, it looks like that's just something on people's wish list. Okay. They would love okay, no so questions. A little easier to manipulate. So, no questions. You can go right on ahead. Okay. All right. All so, right. the lock. Uh, can you change the size of the lower row so they line up with the prior row? Uh, there's no change of the size of lower row. I think it's just uh, 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 how how much text or content you have in there. It's uh, just adjusted based on the content, right? So I think if you have to adjust the uh, height or size of the Column, you have to enter some blank content in there to just occupy the space. All right, so this is how you do things on one page, uh, manipulate the content. Now, let me show you uh, some of the uh, layout design for multiple pages. So this is a typical page. Uh, I have uh, a, I, I call this usually called the landing page or introduction page. This is a page that a student will see when they first log in. So you can see a title, then you have four separate pages. Um, so syllabus, assessment, weekly materials, and project. These are all separate pages, right? You can see that. Um, now, this reminds me of the uh, WebLearn interface that uh, Oxford designed. I think you call it block design. So on the login page, you are going to have several blocks. And then uh, the students can click on each block and navigate very easily. Um, I think you use the block design based on the research that uh, block design help the navigation more than the menu bars on the left. So with the Sakai 11, you can do this very easily. So what I usually do is uh, first I break that up, you know, two blocks, right? Then I'm going to do column break. This one would you do column break. Done. So I have four blocks, all right? So I have four blocks and also I'm going to have uh, this borders very nicely surrounding uh, this link. So it will look a lot nicer. And actually you can have, uh, let me, if, if I go back, okay. So if I go back, go back. And go back. Okay. So actually, if you have four very short links, you can make unlimited number of columns here. So they all line up together. Yeah. So you're going to have four blocks right line up here this way. So because the title of your link are very short. So this is another way to do it. Uh, but notice that this is a link to the page. It is not uh, a text. So if you want to have images, if you want to have fancy titles, you have to use rich text editor uh, to make that, that text. 
so that's another thing we can do. Uh, so go on to page three. You can see here I have four um, text. It's not link. It's but it's just a text. All right. So this way you can manipulate the text that you put there. You can have fancy pictures, fancy fonts, uh, whatever you want. Uh, you can do what I just did here. You know, put them into four separate boxes that make links. But here's another thing you can do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them up into sections, uh, then do a column break. So there will be four giant boxes here. Now, when you have this four giant boxes, you can add things to each uh, blocks. And this way you can um, add students to lead the student to the page. They can just look at things on one page, not going away. Just everything will be on one page. So for example, I'm going to link to the document here. Uh, so let's see, oops, um, I have to click on this button. Um, okay. okay, I'm just changing the order very quickly. All right, so anything for the syllabus will show up under this area, right? So then for assessments, I'm going to link to tests and quizzes. Quiz one. See, I, see this is a screwing me up a lot of times. Uh, so I need to use this uh, assessment, not this one. Page, oops. Clicked it too quickly, sorry. Uh, form topic one okay this one it has student content okay I think you got the idea so this can be the landing page of a of a course so everything will be linked on this one page. Uh, so syllabus, it can be several documents. Assessment can be links to the topics, the assignments, the quizzes, projects. This is a student page. When the students click on them, this can be a list of all the pages students have. And the weekly materials, uh, here you can add um, individual uh, sub pages, week one, two, three, and two, 12, whatever you want. Okay, uh, so this is the another template uh, I think we can do uh, to take advantage of the new features in Island, uh, in in lessons. All right, uh, so this is a very quick demo. Uh, let me go back and see if we got any questions or um, any comments. That's it. Any quick questions for Louisa? This was a great presentation, Louisa. We are starting to use lessons more and more here at UVA, and we love it. Uh -huh. So this looks awesome. Oh, my pleasure. I, I also just started doing this. Yes. We do I have, have a question, question Steve, here, oh, okay. uh, before we get to Neil's question. How do the boxes contract on a phone? Do you know how this um, works on a phone? Yes. So if you contract, I think I can demo here. Okay. So. Do you see how the box shrink the sizes? All right, so to a certain point, uh, it will go like this on the phone. You see this? Oh, sorry. See this? They will line up one after another. So this order is based on the number of these items. If you click reorder, if you click reorder, that's exactly the order of these items that will show up on the phone. Uh, but I would warn you, so if you have uh, a lot more columns and it will, uh, and then the text will scramble uh, on the page. So for example, if you have a lot of text, I would recommend uh, about two or three columns on 
um, on one uh, horizontal area. Otherwise, the text will just uh, cut off. Uh, I can show you what it looks like. And break here. And you can see he, the text here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I shrink and I shrink. Okay. It looks pretty bad sometimes. Uh, yeah, the text will look like this. It's not good. So I would recommend do not use too many columns horizontally. Yeah, two or three would be the best. And sorry, also, you can see the, the pictures are cut off. Excuse me? Sorry? Uh, did you say something, Matt? I was just asking if Neil had a question because I cut him off just a minute ago. Mm. No, I, I, don't, I don't remember my question. So I think there may be a couple on the, uh, in mm. the uh, chat there. Um, so Becky was asking, is it going to Sakai 11? Yes. Uh, it is already in QA uh, 01 server. So if you want to go in there and the test, uh, be my guest. Uh, so if you log in as student 01, uh, this is the site you can go in and look at the examples I put in there. I had a comment, actually, as Adam yes. here. Uh, yeah, well, I just thought I'd tell you about some work we, we're doing at the moment which <laughs> won't be in 11.0, but hopefully 11.1. So we've developed some new components for the lessons tool. So, you know, when you do an ad, sort of ad, whatever, uh, you will, we've done a Twitter uh, feed. So you can define one of those boxes and plonk a Twitter feed in there and you can specify, you know, the hashtag or the username or whatever, and then you get an up-to-date kind of, you know, Twitter timeline, I think they call it. Um, but also, we kind of see that this lessons tool could replace the home page of the site. So we're doing all the synoptic tools. So there's a component for inserting the course site calendar. There's a component for inserting form activity. And actually, you can configure like the number of posts and very various things about the forum. Um, there's also one for uh, announcements as well. Um, so there's an, uh, you can define one of those boxes and put the synoptic announcements in there. And again, you can say, well, I want this many announcements. I want the body of the text shown. Or I don't want the body shown and so on. So we're, we're seeing this as a replacement for the home tool and the synoptic tools. Yeah, I really love to see the synoptic tools in the lessons. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, that's one of well, my top priorities. Yeah, and well, we've nearly, nearly done it. Uh, nearly yeah. done them all. Yeah. Apart from uh -huh. messages. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and to, I just saw Fawi has a question. So if you want to hide the pages on the left side, right? So, but uh, don't want the student to see them, but you still want the student to access the content, right? So it's uh, very easy to do. Uh, so let me just uh, go here, uh, go to page two, uh, go here and where's that delete button? Um, okay, <laughs> things change. Where's that delete button? There used to be a delete button for the pages. Is, is it changed now? Okay, so I can go in the other way to remove it. Where's that page order helper? Side info. Okay, page two. Delete this tool, okay. Page three, delete this tool, okay. And save. Okay, so now they are gone from the left menu bar, right? Okay, so let me go here. Then you go to your main page uh, at the bottom. Click here and say, add a sub page. You choose existing page. And we'll show you all the pages that are not in use here. So I'm going to pick page two, select an item, done. Then add a sub page, existing page, page three, done. See, page two and the three down below. We're going to make a block, section out, done. 
they are not on the left side and but they are linked to here. It looks like a sub page, but actually not. They are top level pages. So if you go in there, page two, go back, and page three. All right, make sense? That's great. Thanks so much, Louisa, for this demo. No problem. This has been really, really helpful. We have also had some comments from Terry and some other folks about how to work with faculty, you know, getting them oriented to these pages, getting them up and running with these pages, especially new faculty. And that may be something that we want to talk about in a future teaching and learning meeting. Different schools might want to share their steps for how they get faculty started with these pages, how they're working on that, because mm. that is something that I think is really, really important. Definitely. Uh, we are upgrading in mid-July, so in August, we definitely need to train faculty how to use this new lessons features. Yeah, so hopefully I would have something by then and we, I could share with the community. And mostly I want to ask you what you have done. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, we are just a couple minutes over time here because we had two great presentations today. So we will go ahead and wrap things up here and let people who need to get off for lunch or for other meetings go ahead and do those things. Remember that we are now meeting on a slightly different schedule uh, starting the first of this year. So now we're meeting on the first and third Wednesdays of every month, which means that our next meeting will not be next Wednesday, but that will be Wednesday, April the 20th. And we will I'm wondering, send out uh, Matt, reminder emails about that. Sorry, Neil. I was wondering, Matt, if, if there's enough interest in, uh, you know, having some continuation on the lessons discussion, if it makes sense to schedule one for next week, if people want. I'm just curious if that was, was an interest in oh. that. I, I you know, so yeah, you're right. We I was just curious if there was interest. Oh, it looks like there's some. Okay, so we, we are seeing some comments here in the chat from Terry, from Adam, uh, from Becky. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and take this as <laughs> votes yes. Um, and we do obviously, as Adam points out, have lots to talk about. So Louisa, are you available? next wednesday could you join us again? um it, it may be a little bit tight i can definitely join but I may not be you know doing any presentation but i would love to join uh the atlas committee is going to decide on the winners on tuesday so i i probably can just uh jump in and and chat with you guys no presentation um but i think i presented all i want at the, today so should be fine yeah okay Okay. Well, I think that sounds like something that at least some of us are interested in. So for those of you who are interested, we can certainly gather here next week during our regular time between uh, 10 and 11 uh, Eastern Daylight Time, and we can talk a little bit more about this stuff. Uh, people who have questions uh, can certainly ask them, and maybe we can have slightly more of a roundtable discussion, um, but we can do that. So, Adam, to respond to your question in the chat, we will meet next week. That was what you were asking, Neil. Is that correct? Yeah, I was asking if there was interest in meeting next week rather than waiting two weeks. Do we have anything scheduled for two weeks from now? I forget. Uh, currently, so do I don't think we have anything. Because I guess that would be the alternative. If we don't have anything, I was worried maybe we had something scheduled and then it would really push the discussion out. But if we don't have anything scheduled, we could just meet, you know, in two weeks and make this the topic and that would be okay too. I just didn't want to, I just thought it seemed like there was a nice thread of discussion here going on. I thought folks might want to keep going on. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So again, to Neil's question, would anybody prefer to meet next week as opposed to waiting two weeks? Would that be preferable to folks? Um, I'm just one person. I actually prefer to meet on the 19th, uh, okay. but it's just me, just one person. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, it should be 20th. 20th Wednesday. Yeah. The 20th. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and Adam Howard-Wass says that the 20th would also be fine. Adam Marshall says that he's easy, which I take to mean that he can meet on the 20th. Okay, well, it looks like um, 
the 20th works for most people or either works for most people. So uh, maybe we'll plan then to extend this conversation to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is on the 20th. Um, and the 20th is also better for Jolie and Louisa mentioned that the 20th is better for her. So let's go ahead and keep to our regular schedule then and we will plan to just continue uh, this discussion and people can ask more questions. We can talk about more details uh, at that time. And Laura Sierra points out that more people will be scheduled in the regular call. They'll have that on their calendar. So that's a good point as well. So I think we have had a great, very full and very exciting meeting today. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. Um, thank you guys so much um, for taking the time. And Louisa points out in the chat, you know, she would ask everybody to experiment with lessons, uh, share your templates and maybe uh, share your experience and your questions when we gather again on the 20th. So absolutely, if you have some time, take a look at lessons on the QA server and we will see you back here the two weeks from today on April the 20th. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, Matt.